Good morning. We're going to go ahead and get started. Welcome everyone to a special press conference to discuss barriers and resources related to Missouri child care workforce development. My name is Wendy Doyle and I serve as president and CEO of United We, which stands empowerment. Our mission is working to advance all women's economic and civic leadership. We conduct research on barriers to women's economic empowerment, and we advocate for change at the systems level. Of course, one of these barriers is access to quality child care. Today, I am joined by two important Missouri leaders. Lieutenant Governor Mike Kehoe is a strong advocate for eliminating barriers that directly impact women and our Missouri economy. We've been partnering with the Lieutenant Governor as we develop innovative resources that provide relief to women and families during this child care crisis. Also joining us today is Dan Meehan, President and CEO of the Missouri Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Dan will be sharing an important yet not well known resource available to child care providers that can improve their recruitment and retention of child care workers. But first, I'd like to just outline the child care issue before us today. Our research shows lack of child care is keeping women from entering, remaining, and re-entering the workforce. Every day, women are leaving the workforce or giving up hope to enter because have access to affordable childcare and it's damaging our Missouri economy. More than 400 providers closed during COVID-19 with no plans to reopen. And these childcare challenges from the pandemic came at a hefty price, costing Missouri an estimated $1.35 billion annually to the state's economy. And this is according to research by the U.S. and Missouri Chambers of Commerce. These findings and other research we've conducted at United We related to the child care crisis have provided opportunities for people at the highest levels in both private and public leadership across the state to unite and develop solutions for women and their families. Earlier this fall, at the request of Lieutenant Governor Kehoe, United We partnered with Dr. Pam Thomas and the Missouri Department of Early and Secondary Education to facilitate a listening session with the business community, child care providers, and policy experts to better understand the child care challenges. The listening session identified several key barriers impacting these providers, families, and employers alike, such as the lack of childcare workers, recruiting and retaining them with a livable wage and access to healthcare benefits. And we'll never forget the fact that the majority of our childcare workforce is comprised of women of color. The listening session echoed what we learned when United We conducted town hall sessions around the state of Missouri. The town halls truly highlighted the significant issues in securing childcare for Missouri families. Without a workforce to care for our children, we can never fully address this crisis. Our work is grounded in research, solutions, and results, and public-private partnerships are key to identifying solutions. Some solutions require policy changes, some require legislative changes, and some are already out there, but people just don't know about them or have access yet. That's why we're here today, to raise awareness of how the childcare crisis is impacting women in our Missouri economy, to continue the conversation of how to keep removing barriers and to make sure people are aware of some of the resources available. Lieutenant Governor Kehoe has been a strong leading voice on finding solutions that will have an immediate impact on the childcare issue. And I'm so pleased he could join us today. Lieutenant Governor, I'll turn it over to you. Well, thank you, Wendy. I appreciate you having us on this call. And um, your uh, lead has been nothing short of incredible. Um, United We's um, mission to economically empower women, uh, as you know, strikes home to me very close to my heart. And I just you, and I know we're done uh, to get to or and Dan Meehan and his team do a great job of making sure they understand and speak for one voice 
uh, what our business community needs. And I'm just grateful they would do that along with their partners on the local level, the local chambers of commerce, uh, which people on this call and all across our state are uh, aware how key they are in their communities. You know, childcare is one of those issues that I have not seen like before in this building in that it is absolutely uh, a nonpartisan, it's not rural, it's not urban issue. It is one thing that people agree on in this building. And I really haven't seen an issue that many people agree on in this building these days. So we're grateful that so many folks are understanding the issue and wanting to pitch together to help fix it. Um, Childcare is a workforce development issue. There's just no two ways about it. Um, as I travel the state and li literally in the last 10 days, I was sitting here trying to write down all the places I've been where I've talked about this, but Hannibal, Kansas City, St. Louis, Cape Girardeau, uh, Columbia, Springfield, all in the last several days, including yesterday in Springfield on a radio show, a number that Wendy just said earlier, we, child care came up about how it's affecting the workforce and what we need to do to get more people back into the market. And so I threw out that $1.53 billion annual number. And afterwards, I talked to the host and I said, how do you think that you know, interview went? Many of us have done this before. And he said, oh, it went great. But you, you mistakenly said $1.35 billion on that uh, child care issue. I said, no, 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 that wasn't a mistake. And he was floored. Uh, and so people who find that out uh, understand that. But after a lot of feedback and a lot of work from Wendy and all of her partners, several child care working groups that we've had together, like Wendy has mentioned, um, lots of stakeholders who truly want to find an end to this, we found um, that one of the obvious glaring issues were the child care providers also have problems getting a workforce in for themselves. And one of their bigger barriers is the fact that they're not able to offer affordable health care. Uh, and again, as a small business person, I know how challenging that is. And it is very challenging. And a lot of these healthcare providers only have a handful of employees and they don't fit the right group size and they don't fit the right pieces of the puzzle to get a competitive price on uh, affordable uh, healthcare for their employees. So I'm so grateful that Dan is going to walk us through a model that might be helpful to them. And we think it's an important piece of the puzzle uh, to moving forward. You know, to solve this child care issue, it's going to take patience and it's going to take partnerships. Um, and we're going to continue to move the ball down the field, uh, as Wendy mentioned, with uh, Dr. Thomas at Desti and other stakeholders across the board to figure out solutions to solve this problem. It's a solvable problem. It's a good news. But as you know, if you hang around me long enough, government's not always the solution to every problem. Uh, as a matter of fact, sometimes the private sector is much better at doing things than government is. And so where appropriate, we want to make sure we forge those relationships and make sure that uh, the government understands its role and then how the private sector can help us in this role on this important issue. And that last, before I introduce Dan, a lot of people ask me, why is Kehoe involved in this? What, what the heck is he doing? Um, well, it's personal to me. Uh, number one, as you know, our office um, champions the Buy Missouri program. We have 520 largely family-owned members across the state and growing. And so I visit a lot of businesses on a weekly basis, and I continue to hear the number one, two, and three is, how's business is my question. The answer is, it's good, but I can't find anybody to work. And those businesses start slowly telling me, you know, if I could hang a banner up instead of a $2,500 bonus, signing bonus, that said, help one at child care provided, um, that would make all the difference in the world to my business. And so that became a common theme as we travel across the state. And number two, you know, I witnessed firsthand as a child, many of you know, my mother raised six kids by herself. There was no man in our life, in our household. I firsthand saw that if somebody, one of her kids was sick or there was a snow day at school, my mom had to make a conscious decision. Do I not go to work and not get that part of the paycheck, which cuts my grocery store visit out or short, or do I go to work and leave that child by themselves? This isn't something I've just heard about. This is something I've been witnessing firsthand as I grew up as a child. And so it's very important to me and it's very personal to me to solve it both from our workforce development issue, the issue where women truly who are talented and want to get into the workforce have an opportunity, and then solving our uh, helping an important piece of solving our workforce uh, development crisis altogether is also a big issue for us. So I appreciate Wendy's leadership and all the stakeholders she's brought together. Uh, she's a saint. That's all I can tell you. And we're lucky to have her in the state 
uh, leading uh, the conversation on this issue because it wouldn't be where it is today, although slower than we all want it uh, without somebody like Wendy Doyle and, and United We. You know, it's my pleasure now to uh, be able to introduce a guy who can explain an important tool that's available out there, uh, Dan Meehan. He is the president and CEO of the Missouri State Chamber of Commerce. I've known Dan a lot longer than he probably wants to admit. But again, that organization and their voice for businesses all across Missouri is not only important here in the capital, it's important to the people and communities all across the state who work with their local chambers, but also work with the state chamber. Um, it's a great partnership, and I'm excited for Dan to be here today and explain the uh, tool that they have available to these small businesses. Dan, uh, thank you for your help and leadership. Thank you for investing in this issue and always being there for us when we need to find more resources on these and other business issues. I'll let you take it away this morning. Well, thank you, Governor Keough. Uh, you framed the issue perfectly. Uh, this is a critical issue for the people of Missouri. It's a critical issue for our workforce in Missouri. And uh, as the leader of the largest business organization in the state, uh, we've got companies that join us from all parts of the state, every size and every corner of the state, and every industry sector. And the common theme is uh, we've got the work, we've got the jobs, we can't find the workers. And uh, I want to thank you for your leadership on this, Mike. And uh, for those of you that that know Mike, you know, when he identifies a problem, he uh, he's not going to quit until he solves it. So uh, thank you for being here this morning. And thanks to everyone else for joining. Also, we need to recognize the tireless efforts of Wendy Doyle and her team at WE. We greatly appreciate the data and awareness they're providing us to shape this important dis discussion. We were very proud to work with them last year on the launch of the child care study that uh, Mike referenced earlier, or that Wendy referenced earlier, and uh, also to help secure a $20 million child care grant that allows smaller and mid-sized employers to combine to try to provide that benefit. Uh, we can't ask for stronger partners in this. But uh, I mentioned the worker shortage is, is pervasive across the state, across the country. Um, it, it, but childcare, it, if it's working, can allow more than 14 million parents to participate in the workforce. Wendy identified that we've lost 400 providers. That's That breaks the system. And parents are struggling to afford the cost of childcare. Child care facilities can't keep workers because of low pay and a lack of benefits, and we're trying to change that. We're trying to break that stalemate. A survey of more than 13,000 U.S. child care workers released last week by the National Association for the Education of Young Children underscores the problem. Uh, seven in 10 daycare centers are not operating at capacity because they don't have enough workers. So slots for taking care of children are going unfilled at 70%. And everyone knows the competition for workers is fierce out there. There are many factors that in, impact a worker's dis, decision to choose one job or another. Uh, one critical deciding point, employee benefits that a company offers. And that is where childcare facilities are at a big disadvantage in general. They struggle to keep workers because many are unable to provide basic worker benefits like health insurance. And we have a possible solution that has worked for thousands of Missourians and thousands of Missouri small businesses. And we could help childcare facilities try to access this. We've developed a unique health insurance plan for small business called Chamber Benefit Plan, administered by Anthem Blue Cross Blue Shield. The Chamber Benefit Plan gathers thousands of Missouri small employers into one purchasing group, thereby driving down and holding down the costs of providing that benefit. There's no other plan like it in Missouri because no other organization can bring, to, bring together more small employers uh, than the Missouri Chamber. And uh, also, Mike referenced the uh, uh, the the uh, network of local chambers that are out there that ha that are de depending on this plan as well. And uh, I think if you're in a community with a local chamber, they're going to know who their child care providers are and vice versa. So th the program's been a game changer. We've got more than 3,600 small businesses in the plan covering more than 40,000 lives. 
90% of those small businesses who switched to cha the chamber benefit plan saw a savings of up to 20% and higher, and some reduced their costs by almost 40%. The other thing that's important to this in, in the insurance industry, the renewal rate for that is at 96%, which is off the charts for the industry. Most importantly, the chamber benefit plan is helping small businesses which never had health insurance in the past, be able to offer that benefit to their members. We look forward to working with the Lieutenant Governor, Mike Keogh, United We and Wendy and her team, and other stakeholders to inform child care facilities about this program that could help them retain their workers and attract their workers. Uh, we plan on providing informational webinars and resources to child care providers and uh, others starting in the first quarter of next year. And for those who want additional information about the plan, please go to chamberbenefitplan.com. That's all one word, chamberbenefitplan.com to check it out. And with that, I'd like to turn it back over to Wendy to facilitate any Q&A that you might have uh, for myself, uh, for the Lieutenant Governor, who knows firsthand as a, a businessman, as a small business operator, the importance of being able to offer uh, an important health care benefit plan to their employees. Uh, so we also have our chief operating officer, Brendan Cassette, who manages the program for us, and he's available for any specific questions that you might have. So uh, we're happy to engage with that. So Wendy, thanks so much for putting this together. Thanks for everyone for joining us this morning. And special thanks to Lieutenant Governor Mike Keogh for his leadership on this very important topic. Wendy, thank you, Dan. Orders, back to you. Thank, thank you, Dan. And thank you to Lieutenant Governor Kehoe for your remarks, for your leadership, for both of your leadership and your partnership. And as Dan said, we do have some time here for a few questions. Feel comfortable in dropping your question in the chat um, or simply unmute yourself. And we are happy to answer any questions that you have. So please. We welcome your questions. Okay, Sarah, um, it looks like that you have a question. Um, please unmute yourself, happy, happy to answer. Hi there, can you hear me okay? Yes. All right. I'm health reporter at St. Louis Public Radio. And um, this question could be for any of the three of you, um, but uh, just because you're here, Ms. Doyle, can I start with you? Why would a privately, uh, like a private market solution through the chamber be a more preferable solution than um, a more government-backed one? Like, why go to the private market for this? Yes. So, you know, I'll start and then definitely Lieutenant Governor and Dan jump in here. So we're just looking at, you know, innovation across the board. And this is just one small step, as we've identified today, that is, you know, an immediate solution that we can bring to the table. It's, you know, a public-private partnership opportunity. It's something that was already put into place with the leadership of the chamber. It just, we're trying to create awareness and open up the potential for our child care providers. Just, you know, we've heard loud and clear, this is a tremendous barrier to really recruit, retain the workforce. And this is just a small piece to the big puzzle. Um, Lieutenant Governor Kehoe, anything to add? Well, I would just say that the private sector tends to be more nimble and, and, and uh, react better to small businesses, especially a lot of these child care providers have a small group of employees. And so there's not really a, a turnkey government solution uh, that on this particular piece of the puzzle that I'm familiar with. So I, I again, as I mentioned earlier, government's not always a solution to everything. And I think partnering with, with, with the government when we can and our legislatures and Governor Parsons, we're all very much in tune and want to help solve this issue. Um, you look at the private sector for pieces that can help move the ball down the field a little bit quicker with a little bit more nimbleness. Uh, and I think that that's what this particular part of the product offers. And there's multiple pieces as Wendy and Dan both said, 
to solving this child care issue. This is not the magic wand that all of a sudden, poof, makes child care available. It's a piece that will help uh, some of our providers um, get, get uh, access to labor in the, within their organization. Wendy, yeah. if I could yes, add please. to that, please. Please. Um, this program has been in existence for six years and it's very sustainable. So it's just a tool that's readily available as the Lieutenant Governor just referenced. And we can turnkey, they can call us and in, inquire about it today. So, uh, and also through their local chambers of commerce. So it's, it's, it's working, it's proven, and uh, the results are, you know, we hear about it all the time that this is a program that helps small businesses compete and attract and retain their people. And Dan, just to add, I believe just because of the nature of the pooling, there's economies of scale. So there is some affordability and some savings to potentially benefit a child care provider by offering it through the chamber program. That's exactly right, Wendy. And when we started the program, we, we employ up to 20 people. We joined it and saw an immediate savings. Our employees saw no break in coverage, no diminished coverage. And uh, it's it's proven that way for the the members in the plan. That's great. Dan, this is a question for you. Um, thank you, Matt Roney, for this question. Do child care providers need to be a member of the Missouri Chamber to access the health care plan? They don't necessarily need to be a member of the Missouri Chamber. They need to be a member of one of the chambers in the Missouri Chamber Federation, which is about 195 plus but they could be a member of ours to, to join it. So uh, that's that's part of the plan. So that that's that's an important part, but it's it's you don't have to join the Missouri Chamber. We just ask that you join a chamber. Great, thank you. Um, Deidre, you have your hand raised. Deidre Anderson with Early Start. Good morning. I, first of all, just wanna say this is a nice, immediate opportunity, the child care workforce is among the most unhealthy in the nation because of the, the low wage piece that ties into everything. So I think this is a really great step in the right direction. Part of um, maybe a question, maybe a bit more for Lieutenant uh, Governor Kehoe, is there any opportunity with some of the relief funds for the membership fees or costs for providers to um, enroll their staff in this program to be covered uh, by the state because it may seem nominal to others, um, but it, it could be a real hardship for a provider to, to actually to join to, to provide this benefit. And before you respond, the last part is just a comment. You know, I think we have the, the urgency of now, but we need to continue working on the long term. And I think that having some sort of a state option that's available um, would be a, a huge benefit. I think, you know, in my experience operating three early childhood centers in the Kansas City region and, you know, going through the ups and downs of trying to get our staff enrolled in benefits plans, and we're a far more elite provider than many, um, you know, when you're looking at whether or not you can pay your rent or, you know, other things, our, our staff tend to make the choice to to op, even as low as the benefit plan is that we offer, often they just don't select it because of the urgency of the moment in their households. And so, you know, just thank you um, to both of you for all three of you for your leadership, because um, I think everybody it, beyond providers now sees the urgency of all of these issues. Um, and certainly offering benefits is a stride in the right direction, but until we also continue to work on the wage piece, uh, uh, it, the, the, the benefits are probably not enough for us to detract people because of how competitive the marketplace is. So, sorry, long-winded comment. I could, I had to seize a moment. Well, thank you for joining us and thank you for providing uh, necessary resources in your community. That's uh we need more of you. God love you for doing that. You're right. Um, the wages, um, the opening wage to get somebody in the door is really, you have to get that person in the door before you can offer them a health care benefit. We fully understand that. Uh, the governor and the legislature, as you know, has been putting resources in the farm of dollars towards uh, working with DESE and child care um, companies to find out 
what the right ways are to help solve that solution with some um, some government uh, from the state of Missouri specifically uh, resources. And those are what DESE is working through right now. Some of those tools are going to be out there in the farmer grants and things that you can look at. But your question is the long range picture, um, I believe, needs to be a, a needs to be addressed. And that is how do we let um, especially highly subsidized child care facilities, which is the work where, it's, where it impacts the most, um, how do we figure out a way for them to keep up with the market rate of labor right now? Uh, every business has seen that. It doesn't matter what business you're in, but, uh, but we specifically always seem to circle back to the lack of getting people into business. A is because we don't have child care is the B answer to that. So it is a, a somewhat of a circle <laughs> trying to trying to put that all back together. But I think you'll continue to see um, efforts this year in the legislature and the appropriation process. I know the governor is very committed to doing this. So are your legislators. And like I said in the very beginning, this is a bipartisan uh, problem. I don't see people saying this is a Republican or a Democrat or rural or urban or white or black or any. This is an issue for our Missourians, no matter where you live. So I think you'll continue to see additional tools come out. This was just one that we had kind of on the shelf through the chamber, and we thought it was worth sharing and also worth letting our stakeholders know that there's more coming as we work through this process, much to the leadership of Wendy and her team. And Wendy, quick comment on that. I think uh, a, a strong step in the right direction was the $20 million that, we that the legislature appropriated last year to try to help uh, employers be able to combine their resources to attract child care help to their facilities. So uh, uh, people are getting the message in a large part due to what the lieutenant governor's uh, done to make this a priority. And we look forward to working with the legislature this session to see what else can be done. Great. Thank you, Dan. Question for you. Um, are there any child care providers currently using the health benefit plan? Uh, Wendy, we've got about uh, over 3,600 small groups in it, and I'd have to go check, try to okay. check that that out. I'm, I'm not sure right now. Okay, fantastic, fantastic. Well, we are really moving closely to our end time, and I want to thank you all for being here today. If you have any additional questions, you're from the media. Um, Lieutenant Governor Kehoe, Dan, myself, we're available to you. So happy, happy to meet and follow up post um, this session this morning. I just want to underscore that partnerships and collaborations are extremely important to find innovative ways to solve Missouri's child care crisis. And today we celebrate that with the Lieutenant Governor and with the Chamber and bringing this resource um, to Missouri. As we look to 2023, childcare will continue to be one of our main areas of focus at United We. And I just wanted to share, we are embarking upon a two-year research study looking nationally at every state's childcare licensing requirements. We'll bringing, we'll, we will be bringing some best practices back here to Missouri. We'll be sharing that with the chamber and the Lieutenant Governor. So stay tuned for more um, information in the days to come on that. In the meantime, I'd like to thank again, Lieutenant Governor Mike Key. Dan Meehan and the Missouri Chamber of Commerce for uniting with us to work for change. And if we encourage you, if you're interested in learning more about United We's work, you can see it's accessible here on the website at unitedwe-org or visit the chamberbenefitplan.com to learn more about the healthcare benefits. Take care and happy new year to each of you. Thank you.